بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful شروع اللہ کا نام لے کر جو بڑا مہربان نہایت رحم والا ہے رحمان و رحیم ولان اللہ نبیلا دنگان نام اللہ یان مہا پنگاسی مہا پنگایان به نام خداوند بخشنده مهربان Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in my dreams A message to the Ummah by Muhammad Qasim ibn Abdul Karim of the features of prophethood except a good dream that a person sees or is seen by others for him When analyzing this hadith in depth, we can understand that dreams play an important part in the religion of Islam. In fact, so crucial were dreams that Sumra ibn Jandub said, Whenever the Prophet finished the dawn prayer, he would look at us and ask, Who of you had a dream last night? So if anyone had a dream, he would describe it, and the Prophet would discuss the dream. Furthermore, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him, narrates the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, If any one of you sees a dream that he likes, this is from Allah, so let him praise Allah for it and talk about it to others. If he sees other than that, a dream that he dislikes, this is from shaitan, so let him seek refuge with Allah from its evil and not mention it to anyone, for it will not harm him. Here we see the importance of praising Allah for a good dream and the sunnah of sharing one's good dream. Dreams from Allah have a meaning behind them and may require interpretation. These dreams can be glad tidings for the believers, especially at times of trials and tribulations. These dreams are a source of comfort for the believers in order to keep them firm in their deen. They could also be a warning against an evil or a window to some events that will happen in the future. However, new Islamic laws and legislations cannot be derived from such dreams as our deen is complete and was perfected before the death of the Prophet. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Majority of the scholars of today unanimously agree that we are living in the end times 
and that all the minor signs have been fulfilled. Regarding this, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, When the end times draw near, the dream of the believer can hardly be false. And that will be because the prophethood and its effects will be so far away in time, so the believers will be given some compensation in the form of dreams, which will bring them good news or will help them to be patient and steadfast in their faith. And now that I have your attention, O Ummah, I present the message of Muhammad Qasim bin Abdul Karim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and final messenger of Allah. My name is Muhammad Qasim bin Abdul Karim. I am a simple Sunni man from Pakistan in my early 40s and for the last 28 years of my life I have been seeing dreams in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have directly spoken to me. Over the course of 28 years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has come into my dreams at least 500 times and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has come into my dreams at least 300 times. You may be thinking, this is blasphemy, but before you inadvertently pass your judgment on me and disregard my message as a fabrication or classify me as a heretic, I would like to say that according to Sharia, it is very important to verify any news that comes to you. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu in jaakum fasiq in jaakum fasiq binaba'in fatabayyanu an tusibu فَتَبَيَّنُوا أَن تُصِيبُوا قَوْمًا بِجَهَالَةٍ فَتُصْبِحُوا فَتُصْبِحُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ I was about 12 years old when I saw my first divine dream with both Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the years that followed, I had many such dreams and I would mainly keep these dreams to myself. On April 2014th, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me, Qasim, I want you to tell the whole world about your dreams and I want everyone to know who you are. And with that command, I began sharing my dreams with my family members, friends and neighbors. I also shared my dreams with some government officials and politicians through email. However, it seemed that no one was believing in me and my dreams, and they all ignored me. I felt like I was on a fool's errand, so soon after, I stopped sharing my dreams. A few months later, on December 2014th, Muhammad wasallam appeared twice in my dreams and said, Qasim, you have to save Islam and Pakistan by sharing your dreams. At the time, I felt as if I had done enough that I've shared my dreams with many people who ended up not believing in me. What more could I do? I was confused. The very next day, the Peshawar school massacre incident took place. And after that day, I decided no matter what, I will not stop my mission until my goal is accomplished. Every time I lose hope, I would be given glad tidings in my dreams and be told, Qasim, do not despair the mercy of Allah. Allah does not waste the rewards of those who are patient and Allah is the best disposer of affairs. This refreshes my iman and keeps me firm on accomplishing the task Prophet Muhammad wasallam has appointed me with. I do not see Allah. I just feel His presence in my dreams. I feel that Allah is on Arsh al His magnificent supreme throne, which extends beyond the heavens and the earth, and His voice is coming down, descending from beyond the sky. Sometimes I see a very magnificent nur, 
emanating with a radiance I cannot describe and his voice resonates from within it. I am not saying that this nur is Allah, but rather it is a magnificent version of nur that Allah created. Allah is beyond everything to be classified as a nur, and He is the creator of nur. The voice of Allah is unbelievable. It is filled with mercy and purity that is beyond words. Allah's voice in my dreams is highly exalted and has no weakness of running out of breath while talking. In one of my dreams I had seen earlier, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me, Qasim, just before sleeping, read Surah Iqlas, Surah Falak, and Surah Nas, so that shaitan stays away from you. And I have been doing so every single night. He, Azza wa Jal, would give me advice on how to avoid all types of shirk and how to be a better human being overall. Whenever I would see Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my gaze lowers out of respect. His face emanates with a shimmering light, and when I look into his eyes, I see luminous nur. The height of our Prophet ﷺ is above 5 feet 11 inches. He has a well-structured body and covers his head with a white cloth. He talks softly and politely, and he shows the deepest affection. Prophet Muhammad ﷺ has the most unexplainable love for his ummah and makes dua for his ummah constantly. In my dreams, I have seen that the prophetic methodology will be established in Pakistan and then the entire Muslim world. I have also seen many dreams on how Islam and the Muslim Ummah will rise up again to the whole world. The Muslim world will be a utopia again, the exact embodiment of the social structure as it was during the time of Prophet Muhammad Our new state will be filled with peace, mercy and blessings and prosperity. A civilization of justice honored with Islam where every ummati of Muhammad will enjoy equal rights regardless of skin color and no prejudice will remain in the land. By the will of Allah, we will destroy all forms of shirk, idol worship, abolish interest, unite all the deviant factions to the truth and no longer deal with barbaric politics. Rather, we will implement the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad and unify under one banner. Together, we will prosper and flourish and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give to us from His infinite treasures and we will all be content. My purpose is to follow the command that is given to me by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by our beloved Prophet. I have constantly been instructed to share my dreams and that is what I hope to do. I want to spread awareness of my divine dreams, to bring glad tidings to the Ummah. A lot of my dreams are related to the next world war, geopolitical issues, and upcoming events that will not only shape the future of the Muslim world, but the entire world as well. I've also had dreams on the jaw and Yajuj wa Majuj. Many of my dreams are very specific and pertain to current worldly events. My aim inshallah is to spread awareness about geopolitical incidents that will take place and the effects it will have on not only Pakistan but the entire world as shown to me in my dreams. I want people to take heed of these dreams. To believe or not, it's your choice. By the grace of Allah, my dreams have been published on various forums, newsletters and media groups. My dreams have been slowly coming true. The conquest of Syria by Turkey was shown to me in my dreams. This dream was published on the 9th of March 2017 and I dreamt of it on the 28th of February 2017 and this became true in 2018. Another one of my most recent dreams, I also had a dream about the former president Nawaz Sharif being kicked out of parliament and then eventually being assassinated which caused great ramifications in Pakistan. I will not go into details about these dreams. My YouTube channel can be found in the description as well as other links where you can watch or read all of the dreams in full detail and in different languages. I am not trying to start a new religion or implement new Islamic laws. I do not want wealth. I do not want your allegiance, nor power, nor your fame. I just want people to take heed of these dreams. I bear no allegiance or affiliation to any sect, country, faction, groups, or government. My allegiance is to Allah alone. 
My creed is Islam and my constitution is the Quran. I am a simple ummati of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who has been honored with this religion. I am simply following the covenant that I have made with Allah and his Rasul in spreading these divine inspirations. People have called me a liar, mentally ill, magician, possessed by shaitan, and accused me of claiming to be the Mahdi. With all due respect, nor have I ever claimed to be the Mahdi and nor do I want to be him. I respect the Mahdi, however, Allah knows best who that is. I am just doing what I was ordered to do, and I only want to be a friend of Allah and serve my Lord. I am not forcing anyone to believe in my dreams. You have the right to either believe or deny them. As for lying about these dreams, then come forth and let us both send curses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the liar. And whoever uses the name of Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to mislead the people, then he should remain in hellfire forever. And indeed, the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon the liars. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِ الْفَنَجْعَ الْلَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ O Ummah, O Muslims of the Americas, Europe, Russia, the Middle East, Africa, the Indo-Pak subcontinent, Australia, and all of Asia, my message is for you to take heed of these dreams as a form of glad tidings, to keep yourself updated as to what's going on around you, and to know that Allah's help is coming very soon. And we will witness our first victory in Ghazwatul Hind. And soon by Allah's permission, Baytul Maqdis and all of the Muslim lands. And this ordeal is not far. To the ulema, the flag bearers of this deen, who strive to enjoin the good and forbid the evil, our Nabi calls out to you. So will you just ignore it? You can deny me all you want, fine, but how can you deny Allah and His Rasul? In your sermons, you have mentioned many times that Prophet Muhammad wasallam constantly worried about his ummah and about their salvation and have preached about Allah's help and victory for the Muslims, especially during the end times. And now that the message comes to you from Muhammad wasallam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will you just turn a blind eye? I am just a simple man. I don't have the support of any organization or powerful figures. I rely only on Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. I will continue to preach my dreams and spread my message. Very soon, by the mercy of Allah, the whole world will be a witness to the truth behind these dreams. For now, I say to you, we, we too are waiting, we too are waiting, we too are waiting.
Dear Islamic scholars of the Americas, Britain, Australia, South Africa, and the West Indies, with all due respect, we humbly advise you to not simply disregard the dreams of Muhammad Qasim ibn Abdul Karim as mere blasphemy, but rather look into the matter as Allah commands in the Quran to verify news that comes to you before passing judgment. The events you see happening before you with respects to Turkey and the Middle East was shown to Qasim in his dreams many years before and they are slowly coming to pass. Let us work together as a community and start to take heed of these dreams. Let us recall that there is no difference between an Arab or non-Arab and we are all equal for Allah. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Oh eruditos islámicos de América del Sur y México, con el debido respeto les aconsejamos humildemente que no simplemente ignoren los sueños de Mohamed Qasim bin Abdul Karim como blasfemía, sino que investiguen el asunto tal como la ordena en el Corán para verificar noticias que viene a ti antes de tomar una decisión. No seas como los estudiosos del pasado que precipitadamente juzgaron y lamentaron sus decisiones después. Que paz y bendición esté con usted. A todos los savants musulmanes de France, avec todo nuestro respeto, nos vous demandons humblement de no pas ignorer les rêves de Mohamed Qasim fils Abdul Karim, en les considérant como blasfème, mais plutôt d'examiner la question como Allah leur donne dans le Coran, et de vérifier les informations qui vous parviennent avant de prendre une décision. Ne soyez pas como les savants du passé, qui ont jugé avec précipitation et ont regretté leur décision plus tard. O oh, studiosi islamici d'Italia, con tutto il rispetto, vi consigliamo umilmente di non trascurare semplicemente i sogni di Mohamed Qasim bin Abdul Karim come blasfemia, ma piuttosto di esaminare la questione come Allah comanda nel Corano, per verificare le notizie che vi arrivano prima di prendere una decisione. Non siate come gli studiosi del passato che hanno frettolosamente giudicato e si sono pentiti delle loro decisioni in seguito. Ihr, islamische Gelehrte in Deutschland, wir raten Ihnen bei allem Respekt, die Träume von Mohammed Qasim bin Abdul Karim nicht als Gotteslästerung zu missachten, sondern sich die Umstände genau anzusehen. So wie Allah im Koran befiehlt, die Nachrichten, die ihnen zukommen, zu überprüfen, bevor sie eine Entscheidung treffen. Seien Sie nicht wie die Gelehrten der Vergangenheit, die hastig das Urteil gesprochen und später ihre Entscheidung bedauert haben. Türk İslam bilimcileri, tıpkı atınız Osman Gazi'nin Allah'tan ona Osmanlı İmparatorluğunu ayakta tutmaya ve ileriye götürmesine yardım eden bilgi ve muştular aldığı gibi, Muhammed Kasım bin Abdülkerim de rüyasında Allah'tan müjdeler, muştular almaktadır. Onun rüyalarını 
dini hakaret olarak saymamanızı, duruma Allah'ın emrettiği gibi Kur'an'ı ele alarak yaklaşmanızı ve kararınızı ona göre vermenizi rica ediyoruz. Acele karar verip ardından verdikleri karardan pişman olan eski bilimciler gibi olmayınız. Allah'a hamdolsun. أيها العلماء الإسلاميون في العالم العربي مع كل الاحترام الواجب فإننا ننصحكم بكل تواضع بعدم تجاهل الأحلام محمد قاسم بن عبد الكريم ببساطة كالتجديف ولكن يجب عليكم النظر في الأمر كما أمر الله في القرآن الكريم للتحقق من الأخبار التي تأتي لكم قبل اتخاذ القرار لا تكونوا مثل علماء الماضي الذين أصدروا الحكم على عجل وندموا على قراراتهم في وقت لاحق والحمد لله وحده يا إمام المسجد الحرام يرسل نبينا صلى الله عليه وسلم بشرى لأمتنا على شكل رؤى لرجل يدعى محمد قاسم بن عبد الكريم فهل لك أن تتحقق في هذا الأمر؟ وقد وعد نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه سيشهد على صحة وصدق الأحلام لك وإن وعد نبينا حق وإذا كنت مشككا فيها فانتظر حتى تنكشف الأحداث ونحن أيضا في الانتظار والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Мы смиренно советуем вам не просто игнорировать мечты Мухаммеда Касима бин Абдулла Карема как богохульство, но скорее изучить суть, как Аллах велит в Коране проверять новости, которые доходят до вас, прежде чем принимать решение. Не уподобляйтесь ученым прошлого, которые поспешно вынесли приговор, а позже сожалели о своих решениях. علمای معظم ایران و افغانستان با نهایت احترام از شما خواستار عدم تعبیر رویای محمد قاسم به تکفیر هستیم همانطور که خداوند متعال در قرآن کریم فرمان داد که قبل از هر تصمیم گیری نسبت به صحت خبرهایی که به شما می رسد اطمینان حاصل کنید و سلام علیکم و رحمت الله و برکاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ہمارے بہت ہی قابل احترام برے صغیر پاک و ہند کے علماء ہماری آپ سے یہ گزارش ہے کہ آپ محمد قاسم بن عبد الکریم کے خوابوں پر غور کریں جیسا کہ اللہ نے قرآن میں حکم دیا ہے کہ جب کوئی خبر تمہارے پاس آئے تو کسی فیصلے پر پہنچنے سے پہلے اس کی تصدیق کرو قرآن میں سورہ یوسف کی آیت نمبر تینتالیس میں اللہ نے خود ایک غیر مسلم مصری بادشاہ کے خواب کا ذکر کیا ہے اور پھر کس طرح اس کے خواب میں دی گئی وارننگ کی وجہ سے اللہ نے اس کی سلطنت اور رعایا کو ایک مصیبت اور قہت سے بچا لیا اسی طرح حدیث مبارکہ میں بھی مومنین کے خوابوں کی اہمیت بیان کی گئی ہے قیامت کے قریب بہت کم خواب ہوں گے جو صحیح نہیں ہوں گے نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے فرمایا ایسا اس وجہ سے ہوگا کیونکہ نبوت اور اس کے آثار اتنے دور ہوں گے کہ مومنین کو خوابوں کے ذریعے رہنمائی دی جائے گی جو ان کے لیے کوئی اچھی خبر لائیں گے یا ان کو صبر کرنے اور ایمان پر قائم رہنے میں مدد دیں گے یہ حدیث بخاری شریف میں چھ چار نو نو کے نمبر سے موجود ہے ہماری علماء سے یہ گزارش ہے کہ آپ اجلت میں محمد قاسم کے خوابوں کو رد نہ کریں اور اس معاملے میں باریک بینی سے کام لیں کیونکہ قرآن اور حدیث کے مطابق ایسے خواب آنا بالکل ممکن ہے ایسا نہ ہو کہ آپ اجلت میں شریعت سے منافی کوئی رائے قائم کر لیں جس کی پکڑ بھی ہوگی اللہ تعالی ہمیں قرآن اور حدیث کو سمجھنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائے آمین جزاکم اللہ خیر والسلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ عزت ماپ جناب پاکستان آرمی چیف 
ہمارے پیارے نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے محمد قاسم سے وعدہ کیا ہے کہ وہ آپ کو ان کے خوابوں کے بارے میں گواہی دیں گے کہ یہ خواب اللہ کی طرف سے ہیں یہ ایک بہت بڑے اعزاز کی بات ہے تو کیا پھر آپ قاسم کے خوابوں پہ غور نہیں فرمائیں گے تاکہ پاکستان اور اسلام کو ان لوگوں سے بچایا جا سکے جو ان کو تباہ کرنا چاہتے ہیں یہ بالکل آپ کی ثواب دید پہ منصر ہے کہ آپ قاسم کے خوابوں پر یقین کرتے ہیں کہ نہیں لیکن ہمارے پیارے نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے وعدے برحق ہیں اللہ نے قاسم کو خواب میں یہ بھی دکھایا ہے کہ نواز شریف کا قتل ہو جائے گا اور اس کے پاکستان پر منفی اثرات مرتب ہوں گے اگر آپ کو اس معاملے میں کوئی شک ہے تو ہم یہی کہیں گے کہ انتظار کیجئے ہم بھی انتظار کر رہے ہیں السلام علیکم بنگلہ دیشی شکھی تو بکتی گن آل مولاما مفتی اور مسلم نیتا گن شمپن و شمان شاہت ہے ہمیں اپنا دیر کے پورا مشہد دیت چھے جے پوری پوری بھابے محمد قاسم میں شپنو گلو کے ابگا نہ کرتے اے شپنو گلو او دھارمی کتھا باترانا ہے بارنگ بیپتہ کو بھی گروہ تو پونو ہی شبے دیکھون یہاں اللہ سبحانو تالر پکھو تھے کے آدھیش اپنے کا چھے آشا اے شنگ بٹی اپنے قرآن ایبنگ حادث تارا چاچائی کرو کنو شیدھان تو نیوار پور بھی او تی تیر پونڈیت بکتی دیر موتن ہو بیننا جارا درو تر એબંં તાદે શિધધંતેર પર અનું તપ્તો હોય છીલો ચાજાક અલાહુ ખાયરાં ગોરવમિક ઇસ્લામી અરિનેરગલે મરીયાદી ક� நீங்கள் கடந்த காலத்தில் இருந்த அரினிர்களைப் போல் முடிவு விரிவில் எடுக்க வேண்டா முழுமையாக ஆராயப்பட்ட பிறகு முடிவிடுங்கள் தங்கள் முடிவிகளை என்னி பின்னர் வருத்தப்பட வேண்டா வாய் பர உலாம மலேசியா Dengan segala hormat kami menyarankan anda untuk tak mengabaikan mimpi Muhammad Qasim ataupun melihat ia sebagai kesesatan agama melainkan melihat ke dalam perkara itu Kerana perintah Allah dalam Quran untuk mengesahkan berita yang datang kepada anda sebelum membuat keputusan. Janganlah seperti ulama-ulama masa lampau yang tergesa-gesa meneruskan penghakiman dan menyesali keputusan mereka kemudian hari. Wahai para ulama Indonesia, dengan segala hormat kami menyarankan anda untuk tidak begitu saja mengabaikan mimpi Muhammad Qasim sebagai penodaan agama. Melainkan melihat ke dalam masalah Karena ini adalah perintah Allah dalam Al-Quran Untuk memverifikasi berita yang datang kepada Anda Sebelum membuat keputusan Jangan seperti ulama masa lalu Yang dengan tergesa-gesa memberikan penilaian Dan menyesali keputusan mereka nantinya Oh, Jongkota Islam Shujerman Shuo Jiyan 我们谦卑地建议你们，不要简单地漠视穆罕默德·卡西姆·本·阿卜杜勒·卡雷姆的梦想，并认为那是亵渎神明的，而要像真主在《古兰经》中命令的那样，先调查这件事，在做出决定之前，核实你们的消息，不要像过去的学者那样匆匆判断，而后悔自己的决定。한국의이슬람학자들에게외람된말씀이지만무하마드카심빈압둘카림의꿈을그저신성모독으로경시하지말고결정을내리기에앞서코란의알라신에게서온진위를확인하도록쓰여진그문제를알아볼것을감히말씀드려봅니다급하게판단하여내린결정에대해뒤늦게후회하는이전의학자처럼되지마십시오日本の皆様、こんにちは。ぜひムハンマドカシムのメッセージを無限にすることなく結論を下す前にこれらの夢について掘り下げ調査してみていただけるようお願いいたします。アッサラム
アレイクム。And to the whole world, we say to you, wait. We too are waiting. And may peace and blessings and mercy of Allah be upon you. We have conveyed our message. To agree or disagree, the decision we leave to you. As for those who ridicule and mock, know that it does not befit the believer to mock his brethren with baseless allegations. So bark to your heart's content, for the cavalcades of truth will continue to move forward regardless of the naysayers. And for those who state the Almighty cannot speak to us in our dreams, how senseless is this parable? For when did the creation of Allah dictate their creator's capabilities? Certainly, Allah has control over all things. Honor and disgrace is with Allah alone. In the end, truth will prevail and falsehood will perish. No doubt, falsehood by its nature is bound to perish. Our message will continue to reach the homes of Muslims in all corners of the world, regardless of race, skin color, or status, and inshallah. Kindle in their hearts and minds a spark of hope. O Muslims, in this age we will witness severe trials and tribulations which will shake our foundations heavily. And these calamities will continue to intensify until they burn the sanctuaries of the Middle East and devastate its inhabitants. The economy, social structure, military prowess of these nations will be in ruin. However, During these severe calamities against all odds, Allah will provide a safe haven for both Muslim and non Muslim, and from the East, raise a nation of men and women whom He will bestow His special mercy upon, and raise them to set straight the disposition of the entire world. They will be given the mantle of establishing justice and peace amongst mankind. And Allah will provide to His Ummah from the unseen a manifestation of ingenuity unlike any other. A mercy for those who take heed and understand. Even if all creation, man, and jinn gather to extinguish Allah's light. They will return humbled, bewildered, and left in awe. For indeed, Allah will perfect His light even though the disbelievers dislike it. After the passing of the Great War, mankind will experience an age of justice under the golden light of Islam, promised to us by Prophet Muhammad. Then, shortly after, the Jaw will emerge. And soon after, Allah will send down Prophet Jesus. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Golden Gears Production. <laughs>